Social media is a fascinating new human phenomenon. And when we look at it deeply from a brain point of view, when we start with the foundation that the brain is actually the social organ of the body, we can understand why social media and brain functions would go hand in hand. That is, the reason social media took off in this last 10 years is because the brain is social and people really want to connect with each other. And then, once social media was designed and keeps on creating itself, then the social media, in fact, is going to be shaping the brain so that the brain is responsive to culture. And in one of our research centers at UCLA, what we're able to show is that cultural experiences, that is, messages sent out in society that are mediated through communication, either one-on-one -on -one or mass media communication, actually shape the actual structure of the brain. And so it's a two-way street. The brain created social media, and social media shapes the brain. One of the simple things I think that social media does is it brings us back at least to a feeling on one level that we're having the connections that we evolved to have. It's a great question, you know, uh, is social media replacing our relationships or is it adding to it? From a brain point of view, the difference between, let's say, email and social media versus face-to-face -face interaction is very interesting. So studies, for example, that have shown what it's like when you actually are with someone face-to-face, -face, where you have eye contact, you're sharing facial expressions, there's a tone of voice you can hear, the posture of the person, the gestures, the timing of what they do, the intensity of what they respond with. Those seven signals, and those are eye contact, facial expression, tone of voice, posture, gestures, timing, intensity. If you memorize those, it's really useful because then you'll see what texting, what email, and what most social media actually is lacking. Now, when you look at what area of the brain both sends out those nonverbal signals and receives them and makes sense of them, it's the right hemisphere of the brain. And the right hemisphere of the brain is much more closely connected to the lower regions, so the higher right areas are connected to the lower regions of the brain, and those lower regions work with the body itself to create our emotions, to give us the felt texture of lived life. So one deep concern that I have as a developmental theorist and a developmental clinician is that the more and more people spend time not using nonverbal signals and instead use mostly verbal ones, that is text with language that has this linear way of being distributed, you're activating primarily your left hemisphere, which in the brain is much more distant from the lower areas that help mediate emotion with, with the body. And even autobiographical memory is dominant on the right side. So you're much more into just logistics. Even thinking about how people are gonna care about you or like you is a left brain thing, which is fascinating. It's called social display rules. So from a hemisphere point of view, what I'm deeply concerned about is if social media, email, texting are not actually getting people more face-to-face -face time with each other or getting them in touch with even what's going on inside of them, then the new generation will be much more used to a very surface level of experiencing the world. So there's nothing inherently wrong with social media, but if it is replacing time for face-to-face, -face, then that could be a big problem.